Welcome back to Battle Blogs. I promised higher production value, and here's an opening title card. I'll do better later, gradually. Today, this time, we're going to talk about the week, the episodes on the 10th and the 17th of February. Hmm. Starting first, we'll have the episode. Starting first, we have the match between Blacksmith and Shatter. Now, I'm just really wanting to talk about the design changes this year. Blacksmith returned after a match or two, yeah, season or two hiatus. This time, not having a flaming hammer, but rather a flaming hammer saw. A trend that's been popping up lately and honestly it's a little bit more destructive than just blunt damage where Shatter has seems to have ditched the ablative armor for a more solid design and I think I approve of this I don't, I don't think the judges got the uh, concept of ablative armor and it was counting against them as actual damage. So that was probably a good idea. The match of free shipping versus uppercut I only really wanted to mention because free shipping exploded and it was beautiful. Big fiery mess. But um... Yeah. I was excited over Gigabyte versus Captain Shredderator because these were uh, these were two of the top horizontal dome smitter, uh, spinning bots in the entire competition of like all time. So this was going to be this was built as a like, great two legends going up against each other. I was excited. I really was expecting a fun little Beyblade match. Unfortunately, after the first contact, Captain Shredderator started to slow down and never got to spin back up or even move again. Ultimately proving that Gigabyte was the superior vertical uh, horizontal dome spinner, spinner but um yeah I really so much for let it rip uh Beyblade kind of thing it was like Beyblade disappointment which is not which is the worst series don't watch it Beyblade disappointment is not a good one that does not exist I wanted to mention Jaeger versus P1 only because of P1's uh, improvements. His design has gotten better, uh, more streamlined. It looks like it's made of better material, and really being able to implement P1 speed to his advantage, and. Pull that out. Uh, the next week we had uh, Yeti versus Pain Train. Yeti has a better design. Seems to be just as much of a uh, brute tank and take the damage and put out the damage. But you know he, now he's more streamlined and faster. Makes it a little bit more scary. It seems as though he's gotten some help from a ba old BattleBots veteran, Christian Karlberg. Uh, Christian Karlberg back in the day made Minion, uh, Toe Crusher, Overkill, and uh, the thing about them is they were fast. They were always fast, so that's why Yeti is fast. Is Christian Karlberg's expertise. Uh, 
Lucky vs. Blade, the South Korean bot. Uh, fun thing about that is Lucky got really lucky. When Blade made impact with him, then hit the wall, and half of Blade's blade broke off and got stuck in the wall, which threw off Blade's balance, and it pretty much killed itself at that point. It was, it was pretty beautiful, and just an interesting highlight. Minotaur vs. Dragon Slayer was a return to form for Minotaur, and just in time, because poor Daniel Freitas, uh, Minotaur's main driver from Brazil, Daniel Freitas came to this competition not long after his mother died of COVID and his grandmother followed soon after, a few days later, I'm going to assume out of grief but maybe also COVID, I don't know. But then, still reeling from that loss, he came to the competition and he needed this win. I don't know if he's gonna make it that much further in the tournament, but he needed something and the support from the crowd was absolutely beautiful. The, it's nice, the community seems to be very good, very supportive, very kind and helpful. And that's what you want to see. The main event of the second week, we saw Lockjaw and Hypershock meeting for the first time ever. Now I mentioned not in the previous episode I mentioned Lockjaw and a bit of its history. It's an older design. They do keep working on improvements, but it is an old bot. Driven by one of the last original veterans. The last original veteran. Donald Hudson, he was there in 96 when the competition was just starting. And he's been around the whole time. Lockjaw's most dangerous weapon is his experience. Will Bales and Hypershock. Will Bales was one of the ones who watched Donald Hudson as a kid, was inspired, and is now in the competition because of Don Hudson. And it was a good match. It really was. It was a very good fight. Um, Hypershock actually pulling out the win. And... Uh, Succeeding for once. It uh, th this competition, Hypershock, is doing really well. I look forward to them actually making it into the main tournament and seeing what we can do from there. This week, I want to talk about the bot huge. Huge is a very weird bot. Its main body is elevated because it's rolling around on these giant industrial rubber wagon wheels, essentially. And so its main body is very protected just by being in the air. And it has a vertical spinner, long spinning bar, long enough to actually hit people while it's up there and they're down there. But, and the wheels, they're not invincible, but they can take a lot. And just by mere weird design, Fuge, Fuge, Huge has made it very far in competitions in the past. How to beat? Huge. Um, most people wind up finding a way to get those giant wheels stuck in something. Like part of the arena, stuff like that. Um, some of the real powerhouses have actually been able to overpower the design of the wheels and tear them apart. That's not easy. 
but only like the top tier damage bots have been able to pull that off. My advice is to either try to use the arena like a lot of people have to beat huge. Actually have the power, not, not easy, to overpower the wheels. Or ha uh, develop a weapon for yourself that can reach huge's main core even if it even though it's elevated these seem to be the strategies i've observed that beat huge on that it's just a very weird bot and difficult to manage at times anyway this has been battle blogs a little better i talked about a lot more matches uh, I actually made notes so I remembered uh, slightly better protection uh, production value I'm working on that but uh, we'll see you again to report on the next two episodes and until then it's robot fighting time <laughs>